Uh, good morning and welcome once again to the uh, Canon Chancellor's spare bedroom, this time on uh, the Friday, uh, Easter Friday, uh, the Friday of Easter week. And uh, once again, in a moment or two, we're going to have a look at the New Testament reading, which by coincidence uh, is once again from 1 Corinthians 15, this time dealing with issues surrounding the resurrection of the dead as Paul uh, tries to explain this as best he can to the Corinthian people. I'll read it to you. 1 Corinthians 15, beginning to read at the 35th verse. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. Not all flesh is alike, but there is one flesh for human beings, another for animals, another for birds, another for fish. There are both heavenly bodies and earthly bodies. But the glory of the heavenly body is one thing, and that of the earthly is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. Indeed, star differs from star in glory. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonour, it is raised in glory. It is sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man Adam became a living being, the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God nor does the imperishable inherit the imperishable. If you remember uh, part of uh, Paul's story uh, and part of uh, what he had to say to the people that he visited on many occasions uh, was that he believed most sincerely that Christ would return uh, during the course of his lifetime. And people are having heard that story in Corinth and in elsewhere therefore uh, might have very legitimately uh, asked Paul many a question when uh, they went through the business of watching uh, their relatives die. They were uh, had been offered life eternal and yet they still lived uh, in the midst of death. Uh, what did Paul have to say to them about this? This latter part of 1 Corinthians 15 is, uh, is part of his response. He always believed that uh, Christ was the first fruits of the resurrection and that those who then uh, followed in Christ's way and uh, recognised him through their faith would also know that resurrection life. And I'm always slightly intrigued uh, if I uh, look the Gospels and the story of Jesus on the road to Emmaus, which we'll hear in a couple of Sundays' time, that uh, those disciples who had been with uh, Jesus in his lifetime took an awful long time on that Emmaus road to recognise who was walking alongside them. Somehow it seemed that uh, he uh, was transformed. Somehow he did not 
appear quite even physically the same as he had appeared in life. Yet they came to recognise him and acknowledge him uh, with that famous line in the breaking of the bread. And Paul, I think, is trying to say something like this to the Corinthian people. The, um, the Jewish people never really thought in terms of bodies and souls. They always believed that uh, resurrection would have some physicality about it. And Paul is nearly always uh, Jewish uh, in what he has to say to us in the first instance. And so I think he believed in a physical resurrection. But what he's trying to say here to the Corinthian people is that uh, that general resurrection of the dead is not like some kind of crass zombie movie with um, bodies appearing from graves. It is actually something more miraculous than that. And many of us may feel uh, grateful for that uh, in the hope that... Uh, the bodies we currently have might be uh, traded in in the end for something more glorious. Living of course in a time where uh, your loved ones and your relatives are dying is one of the profoundest uh, challenges to faith. It was a challenge to the people of Corinth. It will be a challenge today to many people in our own nation. The Christian faith uh, has never uh, armour plated anyone against the uh, random nature of life and the dangers and difficulties that life can bring to us. But we hold on in hope and that hope is that in the end we too may know uh, that transformation, that transfiguration and we may come to know that uh, resurrection body that awaits us and we may come one day to share in the glorious and wonderful presence of a loving and forgiving God. That's the foundation of uh, our Christian hope. And uh, it's something that we cling to and offer in hope for others who just see at this time uh, the darkness and uh, difficulties and challenges that the death of a loved one brings to them. Those who are sick and ill are in our minds today. We remember also those who are bereaved. And we do that uh, using a prayer that remembers that Jesus too on one occasion wept at the death of a friend. God of all consolation, your son Jesus Christ was moved to tears at the grave of Lazarus, his friend. Look with compassion on your children in their loss. Give to troubled hearts the light of hope and strengthen in each one of us the gift of faith. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we conclude again with a prayer that simply offers uh, those who are ill and those who are tending to them uh, to God's mercy. Keep us good, Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick. And lift up all who are brought low. That we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.